I'm creating this devlog to provide some insights into the trials and tribulations of creating my medieval city build. If you haven't seen the speed build video yet of my medieval city, you might want to check that out. I'll link that here. I'm going to keep this devlog at a high level without getting into the programming details as I don't really intend this to be a tutorial channel. However, I already have done a tutorial and I am willing to do some tutorials if people are interested. Let me know in the comments or feel free to join my Patreon if you'd like to see more details on this project. When I started out uh, with this project, I hadn't done any PCG at all. I started with Adrian Logout's tutorial from Epic. It's a very good tutorial on the subject in which he creates a forest and I'll show you the results of that project. So there's currently a PCG volume in this scene and just a blank landscape. When you go through that tutorial you learn how to generate a forest like this see how it instantly generated when I click the generate button all these trees are obviously placed procedurally as well as rocks and some foliage it's very simple and basic but he does get into using some splines to create paths through the forest to create a clearing block some things out and it does give you all the basic understanding of how PCG works which is really great. So I will link that tutorial in the description so you can check that out and get an idea of PCG. Once I did that tutorial, I realized I, I didn't really know a lot about using splines. I hadn't used splines before that tutorial and started working with splines. I found uh, an exceptional tutorial on splines from Unreality Bytes in which he shows how to build a wall system using splines. So this is the result of doing that tutorial. Though he builds it with a basic wall, I decided to use it for a medieval wall as I thought it was really fitting for that project. This resulting wall here has the ability to both conform to the landscape so you can see it'll it'll drop right directly onto the landscape which is great if the landscape is shaped and it can also uh, deform the landscape if it's set up properly and as you can see here it's bringing up the landscape and depending on how these settings in this are it'll deform more or less of that landscape and look more realistic or less realistic when it does that it's a pretty great feature it also has the ability to add in doors and i used that in the build video where you pick a wall section and it will add a door to that section we can add in pillars as well you select one of the spline points and then you change the mode of that spline point using shift T or T and it will add in a pillar at that location as it changes how that spline point works. And then that spline point becomes a more rigid point. And we've set parameters up for this as well so we can pick the different types of towers. I loaded in several different types so we can change what those towers look like and fit that appropriately and give it a different look. This wall segment is one that I built specifically for this. I started out with a Sketchfab wall, but I had to change the wall to work with this system. If we change this to wireframe, I think we can see what I did here. So this has more divisions this way than the original wall. It's a little, a little difficult to see with all the triangles, but let's pull the original one and we can, we can kind of see the difference. So we look at those old wall segments. These are the ones from Sketchfab, and if we look at the uh, wireframe on that, you'll see it lacks those those divisions and the, doesn't have the, the triangles dividing up these parts, which means it doesn't bend well, and the splines can't segment that. So you see, without the segmentation, you can see this this gap in the wall right here. Because it doesn't have the ability to divide this up into additional segments, it just ends up with a gap there. And if we put corrected wall meshes in, well, obviously the size is different as well. This is size to work with the buildings that I use. Yeah, you can see it's, it's now solid. And I had to do the same thing with the door segments or they didn't work right either. So the next spline I built was uh, the medieval street spline. We can see here, even with just this one section, the PCG is now on for the city and we can see what this build. Each section has the ability to have a lantern, a house, some trees and foliage. The foliage spawns around trees and around props. If there's no trees, then you won't have as you won't have the foliage either. So we can turn off houses on right and left and that's going to make more trees. So this becomes more of a forest road. We'll extend the street a bit. We can see it, it uh, change the 
the random generation. The ability to set these parameters is one of the tricky things in, in the PCG graph right now. I, I think they're going to be changing it in 5.4. But in uh, in five three, there's some problems with uh, with how parameters work. I'll get into that a little bit with the graph in a bit. But you can set parameters, and I have parameters for a lot of different things here. The houses on right and left gave me the option to change the way the city looks and build. You can take the trees on and off the left and right as well as the lanterns. We can also change the distance that these houses are from the road by adjusting these min and max. There's a lot of variety and that's kind of the magic of the PCG graph is that you can you can vary all these different parameters and really give your generation a lot of variety so it seems more hand placed even though it isn't. The basic PCG tutorial from Adrian shows you how to place static meshes which is what all the houses and trees and foliage are but it doesn't show you how to place blueprints. These lanterns here are actually a blueprint because they have a light source in them and they also have a Niagara emitter in them so that they look like a flickering lantern, which gives a really great look in the scene. In order to place those, uh, we needed to be able to place blueprints on the graph. Where I do expand this, I think I would make the houses into blueprints as well so we could have lighting and motion inside the houses as well as maybe the ability to enter buildings. That would require blueprints. But you can place blueprint nodes inside the PCG graph as well. So let's take a look at that real quick. This is what the PCG graph looks like for this whole build, which is obviously pretty complicated. There's a lot of subgraphs to this as well. Here is the subgraph for the lanterns. The subgraph itself is simple here once you get down into it. With the forest, uh, we are using static mesh spawner, but there is another node that you can use for placing blueprints, which is just spawn actor and you can use that instead and it allows you to spawn in blueprints. So when it came to getting the parameters off these splines is where we really ended up with some problems. I had to come up with some tricks. So let me put another street out here. I will show you kind of what happened. We can take a look at how I got around that, which might help out some people. We've got a second street here. We'll go into this PCG graph here. And if we look at the uh, spline sampler, that's the wrong one. Uh, if we look at the spline sampler for the main streets, so we look at this one, if we turn on the inspector, which is here, just turned it on with A, and we look at the uh, PCG volume, we see all this data down here at the bottom. And this data is the data for, for the splines that it's sampling and the points that it's creating along those splines. So if we look at this part right here, there's two sets of data. And that's important because there's two roads. So if we had 10 roads, then there'd be 10 sets of data there. Now there's this get actor property. And if we set this up so that it filters out to all world actors and gets, gets actors by name, Cobble Street. When we're looking at the data here on the spline, there's two sets. Once we have the tag set properly and the property name, house offset, max. We'll see here there's only one attribute set. This is essentially an unimplemented feature in UE 5.3 in that this does not get every set of data here. It will only, even though we have select multiple checked here, it's only getting one street worth of data which makes this not useful when you want to set this street to only have houses on one side, this street to have houses on both sides, well, it won't let you do that because it's only getting one set of data. But as you can see here, you know, I have the ability to change both streets here. So we ended up not using get actor property because of that issue. Instead, the way I ended up doing this is by creating subgraphs on the spline graphs. Each spline then has its own PCG graph, which is right here on the parameters. So if we look at that PCG graph, this just gets the properties for this graph. So every every parameter that I wanted to send out from this spline has this PCG graph getting that data with a get actor property, then it sends those to an output node. Then on main graph, we use this get actor data instead of using get actor property and we can pull out all those pins to send those out to where we need them. So that kind of creates a mess, but it works. And then these subgraphs here pull the data out in a loop 
so that it'll get the data for each particular set for each spline and then sends that data on to the generators. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyed the content. If you have, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to know more about PCG or have questions about this development, make sure to leave a comment. I'm working on putting out videos every week, so make sure to subscribe for more content. If you're interested in supporting my growth as an independent game developer and content producer, then please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.